I'm going to show you guys. This is the Anchor 767 that I bought. I want to show you what's going on.
I held it for a few seconds. And I hear it doing something. Mm. 286, 292. Now yeah, we're getting close to 300 and that's it. I cannot get this machine to go above 300 watts input. This should be 400. It's clear blue sky. Two ninety It's gonna rain soon. I gotta get some food in me first. So, I'm not much for YouTubers pointing the camera at themselves. <clears throat> I would rather show you stuff, but I decided I really need to wrap up this video. I bought the Anchor 767, it's now called the Solix 2000. I bought that in May, and it's now September, it's October, so I'm just gonna talk. The 521 panels were late being shipped, so I had this solar generator with no solar. So I contacted a local company and I bought four Trina solar panels. They're 235 watts brand new. They were putting out about 150 watts. But they were doing it with an open voltage circuit of... maximum voltage is 30.1 and what I think is happening is I've learned that you can't just mix solar panels the Trina solar panels are 30 volt whereas the anchor 521 portable panels are 50 volt and I learned the hard way that the anchor solar charge controller has two, it flips between two different settings. If your voltage coming in is on Reddit, and I got a great answer, the 767 will take from 11 volts up to 32 volts at 10 amps max, but if you go above 30 volts all the way to 60, it'll take in 20 amps max. And so I think the distance from those Trina solar panels outside through trace all that wiring all the way to where the anchor is located the voltage drops just enough that the solar charge controller stays at 10 amps so it limits how much power is coming in overall I also tried putting the Trina panels in series but the voltage was too high and the anchor would not take the charge either so those Trina solar panels are fine 
used, but they're just not a good match for this anchor. So what I really want are solar panels that are at least 40 volt all the way up to nearly 60 because then I can pull in twice as much power through that, that solar charge controller. So it's just quirky. And now I know. Read the manual. If you're going to buy panels of a different brand, just make sure that you understand the voltages of those panels. You know, you buy 20 volt panels, you can put them in series, two of them, and you'll get 40 volts and you'll be at a higher amperage. Problem solved. You could just buy more anchor panels as well, but they're not cheap and they're not light. They're These things are like 18 pounds a piece. So in a boat, you're kind of limited on where you can put them. So in my final thoughts, I think the Anchor 767, the Solix 2000, it's got a plenty big enough battery to run this boat. It's got a plenty big enough battery to run multiple devices at my workshop. I mean, you can pull close to two, what, 2,400 watts out of the thing, and it's a 2,000 watt hour battery, so you can you can pull 2,000 watts for an hour. So I think the battery's perfect, but what I would do differently is I would double the number of solar panels that I use. So you put a high load on it, and the battery drops. You drop to a lower load, and it starts going back up, obviously. But if you can't get it high enough during the day, as evening comes along, the battery doesn't get replenished enough. And then when you come in in the morning, you're still starting from a lower charge. So my advice is, this is a neat system. It's very simple. It's idiot proof, unless you're an idiot and you don't read the instructions. But the size of the battery is less of an issue than the number of solar panels. The battery capacity is not as important as how much juice you are putting into it during the day. My goal is to double the number of solar panels that I've got here at the boat or at my workshop and then the battery will be nearly fully charged towards dinner time at the end of the day. You still got some more sunlight to top it off so that in the morning when you come back it's full. Or if you're going to have it running a refrigerator or something all night like this one um, the battery's not all the way to zero when you come out, which brings one more little quirk up, which is that if this battery runs to zero, in the morning the sun will come out and the panels will start charging the system, but the AC panel, all those AC outlets do not automatically turn back on. You have to come out and turn them on. So if your battery is nearly fully charged in late in the day, it'll still have some juice in the morning when you come back out and everything's fine. Uh, I probably ran this boat five days out of seven overnight with this battery and with those two solar panels. If the AC panel doesn't detect enough draw, it shuts off and there's just no setting or explanation for that. Hopefully there's an update coming that will fix that. but. If you're not pulling enough juice, if this fridge, if it's cold out and the fridge doesn't run, nothing else in here is on, the AC panels just shut off, which is frustrating. So this is a little trick I'm going to show you. I turn on this light and this light and just one more because two isn't quite enough. But if I turn on three lights. Come on. Overnight, even if that fridge does not draw enough electricity to keep the anchor running, these three lights do. And in the morning, they'll have drawn like four or five watts plus four or five or four or five, about 20 watts total. And that's enough to keep it going. I choose lights because there's no moving parts. If a fan, I don't know. If a fan started to act up, started smoking, it could maybe burn the boat down, but light bulbs have no moving parts. I think what you need to understand is 
you have to babysit this thing a bit. And I'm looking forward to the day when you don't have to do that. When the sun comes up in the morning and the dead battery starts charging, and when it gets to maybe 10%, the AC outlets turn back on. That would be my ideal device. The anchor is powerful enough, the battery is big enough, but whatever solar you think you need, you should probably double it. I'm going to keep these uh, these anchor portable panels for camping and things like that. And for the boat, I'm going to buy the lightweight thin film kind of solar and get 800 watts uh, at 40 to 55 volts. Um, and then that's going to be on the flybridge roof, way up high, full sun, as long as possible. So I bought this system to learn about solar. I wanted to find out how much I need to use at the boat, um, how powerful is this thing, and it's warranted for five years and it's useful for at least ten, so I figured it can't hurt to start now. Um, because we're headed towards a solar and electric future, and I just want to get myself educated as soon as possible um, so that I can make good decisions in the future. I'd like to have a heat pump at my house, I'd like to have um, solar panels on my roof at home. I have massive amounts of roof space at my workshop for lots and lots of solar. Um, but you need to pay attention to a lot of things such as net metering. In my town of Grand Haven, Michigan, uh, the BLP doesn't play nice about those things. They are not solar friendly. But this is uh, fall of 2023 and there's a big shakeup going on at the Grand Haven Board of Light and Power. But apparently at my workshop, Consumers Energy works well and plays nicely with solar, so I will probably get my first really large system up at my workshop. And that learning experience will help me with my house. So I'm hoping that the furnace at my workshop fails first, and then I can replace that with a heat pump and put a bunch of solar there, get rid of the gas bill and get rid of the electric bill, or at least cut it way down. And from that learning experience, do the same thing at my house. And also, one of my antique trucks I use a lot for work, but the other one, which is almost entirely original, so I want to unbolt and get rebuilt, engine, transmission, everything, but then crate all of that up and put it in long-term storage. And then without drilling a single hole, I want to convert that truck to fully electric. It is a perfect candidate for it, uh, and I can use it for short haul trips. Um, but I want to be able to plug it into solar at my workshop. Who knows when the next world war comes and all of a sudden gas is eight bucks a gallon. Heck, right now in California, it's five and a half bucks a gallon for premium. GoPro, stop recording.